People's Health Administration will also oversee the newly nationalized pharmaceutical industry. Medicines will be free. I mean, just that alone. Can you imagine if you told the masses of people, including those who are against socialism, you won't have to pay any more money for medicine or doctor's bills? No more co-pays. No more co-pays? I mean, I just think we'd, we'd get half the population right there. Medicines will be free. Pharmac pharmacists, scientists, clinicians, and public health workers will work with communities to assess the use of and need for various medications based on local data and develop a plan for producing them. In the current capitalist system of marketized health care, about $30 billion a year goes to medical marketing just for advertising for these medicines, $30 billion. 68% of that, or $20 billion, is spent by healthcare companies persuading clinicians, that is doctors, to the benefits of certain prescription drugs. Medical marketing convinced clinicians that OxyContin had no abuse potential for chronic non-cancer pain. That was a lie. Drug overdose deaths in 2020 hit the highest number ever recorded. According to the Centers for Disease Control, that year, more than 93,000 people died from the opioid drug overdoses, most of those with synthetic opioids like Oxycontin or fentanyl. Abolishing the market in prescription drugs and ensuring that medicines are produced based on people's actual needs will save lives. It's, you know, people always say in Congress, well, you want all this free health care, who's going to pay for it? Well, if you get rid of the pharmaceutical companies, mm -hmm. if you get rid of the insurance companies, if you get rid of the need to spend $30 billion a year on marketing medicines to convince people to take Oxycontin or other drugs that will kill them, there are so many savings within the system. The only reason that the United States the most advanced capitalist country in the world doesn't have a national health plan is because a small tiny clique of capitalists and a smaller, well it's a bigger but still small group profit from a system that basically treats healthcare as a commodity. We would make, we wouldn't, we're, our plan is not for Medicare for all. We are for socialist medicine meaning medicine is not a commodity at all. It's not paid for by the government to this uh, hospital, this private hospital, to these investors. The investors are out of the picture. You know, the, the, the right wing always says, the right wing always says, well, you want, you socialists want to have uh, uh, the government or a government bureaucrat stand between me and my doctor. Well. No, we're going to eliminate the entire capitalist class that stands in the way between you and your doctor because once healthcare is not a commodity, once it's not something to be bought and sold or from which profit can be made, then you really can liberate, emancipate all of the doctors and nurses who wanted to become doctors and nurses, not because, of course, some of them wanted to be super rich assholes, but, but most of them wanted to do it because they wanted to help people. And those are the doctors and nurses who really will be at the center of reshaping healthcare when the profit motive is taken away. One of the biggest and worst issues when it comes to healthcare is the racial disparity when it comes to maternal deaths. Yes. And that obviously became a very potent issue in the 2020 Democratic primary. I would argue weaponized by Elizabeth Warren against Bernie Sanders for her own reasons, but it speaks about how sophisticated capitalism is. Because, you know, she was raising the point that was 100% correct. That, well, if you just say universal health care, you're not really addressing the fact that, you know, there are deep disparities that exist within the healthcare system that probably won't just go away. True. But the thing that was notable to me was her solution, which was so underwhelming, which was just, well, we're going to start finding the hospitals. And I just thought, well, there are so many fines for everything, and there's fines for pollution. People are still dumping toxic waste in the river. There's fines for wage theft. 
Yet there's more wage theft every year than all other forms of so-called criminal theft in America combined. So obviously just finding people isn't really gonna make any difference. We know what causes it, and we know that it's the deep racism of the medical establishment, that people don't believe black people when they say they're in pain, when they say they're having other issues. There's this, oh, you must be a Superman, you know, slave breeding type of mentality towards black America. So obviously that's not gonna change with the fine. But you know what would change it is if you just made all the doctors black women. But obviously, if you're going to make all the doctors black women, you got to control every medical school, every hospital, every doctor's office, every outpatient office, the pre-education you know, education you have to have to even get into medical school, so who goes to college, what you teach people at a young age, the entire propaganda apparatus that tells young black girls they couldn't be a doctor. So what is going to give you the power to control the media, the hospitals, and education system, and then make it all work to end the disparity in maternal deaths? Well, that's to eliminate the capitalist class that controls it all and sells it all for money now and to put it in the hands of the people who would rather save the lives of black women than let them die. So I think it's like that kind of creativity is what comes to the forefront when we say we want to seize the means of production and eliminate commodities and replace it with human solidarity.